What if you don't have hand carters or a drum carter? Maybe you don't even have combs, you don't have hackles, you have nothing to prepare your fibers. And you have a whole bunch of different fibers. You wanna spin this up into traditional yarn, what do you do? In this video, we are gonna show you what you do to be able to take this yarn and spin it all the way through to traditional yarn. We have our fibers with us. This is an ounce of fiber. And if we have no tools, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna use our hands and we are just going to fluff it up a little bit. We're gonna make sure none of it is sticking together. So any parts that might be kind of a little bit stuck together, we're just gonna pull them apart, tease them apart, or pick them apart with our hands. So this is Angora. You can do this with Angora fiber. Angora does not need to be carded. You can actually spin it as it is. We're just gonna pull it apart here, just tease it apart a little bit. We have a little bit more Angora from a different rabbit, slightly different color. We're gonna do the same thing, just slightly pull it apart. We don't want anything stuck together when we're spinning because when fiber is stuck together, it's more likely to start getting a little bit lumpy bumpy. And when you're trying to spin a traditional yarn, you don't want it lumpy bumpy. So now we have a couple pieces of roving and a couple smaller pieces of roving. Some of the roving is silk and some of it has a little bit of bright different colors in it. It looks like it's kind of a nylon type mix in there. But we're just going to tease this apart, make sure we don't want any of the roving stuck together. So we're going to make sure the roving is loose. We don't want stuck roving. So any pieces that are really stuck together, we want to just pull them apart and tease them apart a little bit. So this is quite stuck together. That's going to make a lumpy bumpy section. When you have something you can tell it's stuck together because when you pull it, it's not coming off nicely. This is going to require a little bit more teasing out. Any of the sections that are compacted, you really you want to take the extra little bit of time and you do want to pull them apart. So this is an extra compacted section right here. I wanna pull this apart. What this is gonna do is it's gonna cause me to have some lumps and bumps in my yarn. We don't want a ton of lumps and bumps. We really don't want any. We're going to always have a little bit of variation, but we wanna stick that in the as little as possible category. Okay, a little bit more roving. This roving is very loose. So that's awesome. When I pull this apart, it pulls apart very easily. It doesn't really stick together. If this was a very sticky roving, then um, I would take my time and just tease it apart a little bit more. So I tease this just a little bit apart, make sure nothing is sticking. Tease it a little bit apart again. I've got nothing really sticking in these sections. This will spin up nicely. This is from a bat. So this particular fiber, it's the same thing. We're just gonna open these up, these sections up a bit. We don't want this fiber to be stuck together. We don't, and you might find sections are really loose in a bat, and you might find there's some sections when it went through the drum carter, like this little section right here, it got a little bit stuck together. You just wanna pull that apart. So this is just what we're gonna finish up here. Sometimes I'll take the fiber and kind of pull it apart in different ways. So I can have movements where I'm horizontally pulling the fibers apart, such as this motion where I'm horizontally taking them. That's a section where it's kind of stuck together. But then again, I can have a piece of this and I may vertically pull this apart. So. We're just using this and just kind of fluffing it up, pulling it apart, and we're done. So this is the fiber. Let's give you a look. This is what we ended up with, just piles of fluff that's been lightly pulled apart. And what we're going to do is, because we don't have anything to blend these together, we don't have any hand carters, we don't have a drum carter, we're just going to keep these in the piles. And as we're spinning, we're just going to pick a little bit from each pile. So spin some of this, then we'll spin some of that, then we'll spin some of this, then we'll spin some of that. 
and that'll just gently blend the fibers throughout the yarn. They're not going to be blended together in the same way as if you'd use other tools, but because we're just going to keep going like this and pulling and pulling and pulling from the fibers, we are going to set up a rhythm in the yarn that's going to have a little bit of consistency to it. So we're going to be focusing on this section of the video. We don't have a long leader line going on here. That makes it a little bit difficult to get started. I can choose the fiber I want to start with. I'm going to start with a bit of this fiber. I'm going to join it on. You might have to adjust your tension. That's okay. Kind of get your wheel where you want it to be. Oh, maybe a little bit too much. But we just start spinning. So after you've used your hands to tease this apart, you simply start spinning the fiber. We didn't pull a big section of this. That's okay. Again, we're going to rotate through the fibers. We started with this particular fiber. And as we're spinning all of these fibers, they will feel a bit different because they are not the same fiber. We've gotten to the end. Now we're going to pick up just a little bit of that Angora. Just a bunch in our hand. And we're going to let it join on. It's okay to do this slowly. If you need to slow down, that's all right. That's what I'm doing. It's just kind of slowing down a little bit. spinning the yarn, we have it wound onto this bobbin, and the next thing that we have to decide is what are we going to do with it? So you have a couple different options. Of course, you can always leave it as a single. You can turn it into a center pull ball, and you can ply it back on itself to turn it into a two-ply. Or you can also just ply this with another single of yarn you have laying around, or you can chain ply it to turn it into a three-ply of yarn. So when we're looking at this particular, particular yarn right here, I think what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we are going to turn it into a two-ply of yarn. So that means we need our ball winder. Now that we've created our center pull ball, we are going to simply attach the yarn. And we are going to ply the yarn always in the opposite direction of what you've spun it. Okay, we're gonna need some more tension here. So we're going to ply this up, creating a two-ply of yarn. This won't take very long because this is only an ounce of yarn. It's time to 
is the Nitty Nutty. We finished plying the yarn. This is a two yard Nitty Nutty, but you don't have to use this Nitty Nutty. After we finish this, what we're going to do is we are going to wash the yarn and set the twist. We're going to let it dry, and then we have to figure out what we're going to do with this yarn. And I do have an idea about what we're going to do. This is our yarn. We've washed it and we're hanging it to dry, but we don't have a fire. I'm going to show you a trick for a yarn like the one that we've created that you can dry it quickly. So here's the yarn and here's just an inexpensive hair dryer. This one was less than $25. High and low. This is our creation from the yarn that we spun. We used all of this yarn and we created this snake. This pattern is available at Rabbit Tree and Yarns. We can leave the pattern down below. Because of the way we created this yarn and the way we spun it, you can see that it is perfect for making a snake that has natural stripes in it. And so this is, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is what we did with our yarn and I can't wait to hear what you did with yours.